Hi, welcome to our new YouTube tutorial. In this video, we're going to create a navbar menu with HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. This type of navbar is kind of different because I think it's more modern and creative than the other standard navbars. Let's go ahead and describe the project. We have a dark blank background with the icon in the center. If I click it, then the navigation items will display with some nice rotation effects. Actually, this is a template and you can feel free and use it on your website. The project is going to be little, but I think it will be interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and start to build it. I have created the folder on the desktop. So let's open it in VS Code. I'm going to create three different files. The first one is going to be index.html. Then we need style.css and script.js. Then go to index.html file and insert here the basic HTML document. For that I'm going to use Emmet. We need to place an exclamation mark and hit enter. Alright, let's go ahead and change the title. I'm going to insert here navbar. Then also I'm going to link CSS and JavaScript files. For that we need to open link tag and we need to indicate the path of the file. In this case the file name style.css. As for the JavaScript, let's open script tag right above the closing body tag. And in source attribute specify the name of the file. Besides that, we're going to use a couple of font awesome icons. So we need to get CDN link. For that, let's go ahead and search for font awesome CDN JS. Grab the first link and paste it in the head element. All right, that's it about the setup. Finally, I'm going to run the file in the browser. For that, I'm going to use Live Server, which is a VS Code package. It allows us to make the updates without refreshing the page each time. So you can go ahead, install it, and you'll be able to run your project live in the browser. Okay, let's place the text editor and the browser side by side. and start to build HTML markup. Let's open development and assign to it a class name navbar wrapper. This element will wrap the entire navbar. Then open another development with the class navbar. Actually, it will include all the links and the icons. So I'm going to open link tag with the class name navbar link. And here we have to insert the first font awesome icon. It's going to be FAS, FA-home. So overall we will have six items. Let's duplicate link element five times and then change the class names for the icons. The second one is going to be city. Then we need school. Landmark, Hotel, and finally we need here Store-Alt. Alright, that's it about the nav items. Finally we need to create the button. It will be represented by the development and a font awesome icon. So let's go ahead and open div with the class name navbar-btn and then insert here font awesome icon with the classes FAS FA plus. All right, that's it about the HTML markup. All the elements are created and we are ready to start to write some CSS. First of all, let's create some reset styles. I'm going to get rid of margin and padding for every element. And in order to select every element, we have to use an asterisk. And then let's go ahead and set margin and padding, both of them, to zero. Throughout this project we're going to use RAM as a measurement unit. 
right now by default one RAM equals to 16 pixels because the font size of HTML is equal to 16 pixels. I'm going to make one RAM equal to 10 pixels because I think it's more convenient and easier to calculate. So in order to convert one RAM into 10 pixels we need to decrease the font size of HTML. So let's select it and make its font size 62.5%. Alright, so as you can see the size of the icons decreased and now one RAM is equal to 10 pixels. Let's go ahead and select wrapper div element. Let's define its width and height. I'm going to set width as 100%. As for the height, let's make it 100% of the viewport. We need 100 VH. Also change the background color. I'm going to use here 3B, 3B39. Alright, as you can see right now the icons are not quite visible. So let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to select navbar icons. Let's increase their font size, make it 2.5 RAM. and change the color, make it white. Besides that, I'm going to select the plus sign as well. Let's increase its font size, make it 2 RAM and also make the color white. Alright, so now the icons are visible and the next thing that I'm going to do is to place them in the center using Flexbox. So we need here display flex, then to center the items horizontally we have to use justify content center. As for the vertical centering we need align items center. Ok, let's go ahead and start to work on the navbar. Let's select it and define its width and height. I'm going to set both of them to 20 reps. Also, change the background color. Let's use here color EC4444. After that, I'm going to take care of the plus sign button. So let's go ahead and select Navbar PTN. Actually, if we make its position absolute, then the icon will place in the center of the navbar because it will jump out from the normal flow of the page and the flexbox will center it perfectly. Next let's define its width and height. I'm going to set both of them to 6 rams. Also change the background color. I'm going to use here color 12C095. Alright, besides that I'm going to center the plus sign inside the box. For that I'm going to use again Flexbox. We need Display Flex. Justify Content Center. And Align Items Center. Then make the box rounded using border radius with the value 50% and finally change the cursor, make it pointer. Alright, so that's it about the plus sign. Now we need to center all the items. At first let's change their position and make it absolute. As you can see icons are placed on top of each other. Also we need to change the position of its parent element which is navbar. Let's make it relative. Once we make the position relative then we will be able to position icons according to its parent element. Alright, now I'm going to center the icons and for that let's use again flexbox. Actually I'm going to grab those three lines from here and paste them for the navbar. 
Okay, now the icons are no longer visible because they ended up behind the button. So I'm going to comment it out for a while. And then once we position the items, then we'll display it back. Now finally, it's time to position each of the items separately. For that, I'm going to use a pseudo class called nth child. So let's go ahead and start with the first item. Select navbar link, followed by the nth child pseudo class. Actually, it is a function and we have to specify the number of the item inside the parentheses. So for the first item, we need top position to RAM. Then let's go ahead and duplicate this code five times. For the second item, we have to define top and right positions. For the top position, we need six RAMs. As for the right position, we have to set it to two RAMs. Next, we have the third item. We need here bottom position. Let's set it to six RAMs and right position with value 2 rams. Next we have fourth item. For the fourth item we need to use just the bottom position with the value 2 rams. Next we have fifth item. Let's set its bottom and left positions. I'm going to set bottom to 6 rams. As for the left we need 2 rams. And finally, for the last item, we need top and left positions. For the top position, we need 6 ramps, and for the left, we need 2 ramps. Alright, so the icons are positioned. Let's display the button back and also make the navbar rounded. Let's use here border radius with the value 50%. Next, I'm going to create a little hover effect. I'm going to change the color of the icons when we hover over them. So let's go ahead and select Napper link with the hover. And then we need to select I element. Let's change the color. Use here color 12C095. And also use transition with color property and with the duration point 3 seconds. Alright, actually everything is prepared to make the navbar work. By default I'm going to hide the icons and also rotate them. I'm going to hide them using scale function. Once we click the plus sign, icons should display and then on the next click they will hide again. So we will use a toggle method. I'm going to create a new class in CSS. We will add and remove this class from the navbar using JavaScript. First of all, let's hide and rotate items by default. We need transform with scale function. We have to insert here 0. And then I'm going to rotate icons by 180 degrees, but with minus sign. Then create a new class and call it change. Then select navbar. We need to use transform with again scale and rotate functions. So when we click the icon, then we have to give to the items their default size. So we need here scale with value 1. And also we need to rotate with 0. Alright, now we need to write some JavaScript. Let's go to script.js file, select button, for that I'm going to use query selector method. We have to specify here the class name, which is navbar btn. Then attach to it event listener with the click event. And also we have to pass here the arrow function. So now we need to add a new class name change to the navbar wrapper. So first of all, we need to select this element. Use again query selector method.
and specify the class name in the parentheses navbar wrapper now we have to use class list property which actually stores all the classes that the element has and then we need toggle method with the class change so now if I click the icon then the items will be displayed but in this case without any effect so we need transition with transform and with the duration 0.5 second now if I click again the icons will display with a nice and cool transition all right lastly I'm going to add some effect to the plus sign itself I want to rotate it on click so let's go ahead and select again the change class followed by the navbar ptn i so I'm going to rotate the plus sign by 45 degrees let's use rotate function and also for smooth effect let's use transition we need here transform and as the duration that's indicate here 0.5 seconds all right so now everything works perfectly and actually we are done with this project again you can feel free and use it on your website because i think it will make your project more creative and modern i hope you enjoyed this project if you like this video then please thumbs up comment below subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on every newly uploaded video Okay, see you in the next tutorial.